Okay, dudes, welcome back to that section 11A. This is 35 minutes, so I'll play this a little faster. One and a half times, unless it seems like going normal speed. <coughs> I just painted. Pretty much. It's probably a shower. Section 11 of our 15 part series on the Molten Sea Art Atomic Reconstruction Technology. In the previous section, we went through all yeah, the clean my glasses and engine and using our technology as a, a waste energy recovery system. Just recapping that for everyone that basically, whether it's burning fossil fuels in a furnace to create electricity or, or whether you're burning it, fossil fuels, whether it's oil or gas, uh, whether it's methane, methane, propane, butane, you know, octane, or kerosene, diesel, they all produce waste heat and waste shock wave, which is an important part of this equation. So that waste energy is effectively absorbed, stored, and then released uh, back into the combustion chamber. So now we're going to go through, and this is a more detailed view of the theory behind those machines we've just seen, just to uh, recap, just so that people can revisit and repeat most of the stuff was in the previous <coughs> section, section number 10, but... It's just poorly ordered then, unless it's intentionally poorly ordered so that it's harder to understand what's happening while he's presenting it and then to explain it. So you almost have to, like, watch it twice to realize that's happening and to then know that this one might be good to have watched earlier. I don't want to be too negative. I'll just stop being rude. I think it's worthwhile with more detailed diagrams to just go a little bit deeper. So hopefully uh, now that people see the machinery operate, they'll feel it incumbent upon them. I was just thinking, though, I would like for this to be true. Like, I would like to come out of... I, if I had a choice, I don't... The thing is, I just generally don't, like, believe that it's true. <laughs> So, like, based on what I've seen, though, I've seen enough to see that it's not, like, completely unpersuasive. Like, I haven't been, I haven't had my mind closed by listening. I feel like that's <clears throat> really a sign that there's something to it, and whether or not it's, like, completely... Um, spot on in this device works or not like at least there's some pretty progressive thoughts relative to like the consensus that then will help us in the process and I mean <clears throat> optimally it A works and B doesn't have any side effects that's another thing that I think when we're talking about this type of technology, it, it's worth like actually contemplating what could happen if we did this in, in mass. Let's say hypothetically this works, like the the ion sending energy to the ionosphere, and then like receiving it. And in, in that method, let's say that's the method. Like that seems like it would have some potential side effects hard to control like it could get very out of control lead to like a lot of storms maybe just a lot of energy exchange with between more so than usual between like the atmosphere and the earth leading to like a lot more light lightning storms it's just discharging this energy we're putting up there <laughs> so like then it becomes almost like the more we put up there the more it just drains down back to the earth as a discharge maybe <clears throat> so something like that like where it, who knows how out of control something like that could happen get um then with a the radio one although i really think it's possible because it's like really like i was saying it's like a low note oh oh it's maybe it's like the ohm oh Oh, <laughs> like that. No, ohm sounds low, so maybe 
it is representative of like the zero point energy, like the actual energy that is pervasive through the entire universe not just formed like at a certain point although so <clears throat> i don't like that aspect of terminology where it's like misinterpret either misusing misinterpreting the term like it <clears throat> zero point traditionally has a intended meaning whether or not we understood it and or if i understand it even um, like it still had a meaning that's not really met at all by the, the zero point in his stuff but I understand why you would call it that if it's kind of like a collision point that's like a like the negative positive sides coming to zero in a number line like and then the y-axis of branching off of it in a vortex. So to understand why it's working. And now that uh, they've been convinced by Satan, that, that question's answered. So here we go. The sequence where you have countless induced disassociation of water. So you have coming into the, into the system, into the thunderstorm generator, from the, basically starting with the UV light, frequency imprinted onto the air. The air goes into the MSAT plasmoid generator, which is your bubbler. That has a pulsed vacuum, which means that it pulls the microbubbles out of the solution of the water and create these bubbles, microbubbles, of the gases, and then on the pressure pulse of the motor, those bubbles then without the vacuum and with some pressure collapse. And that's uh, the star in the jar, which is in section one of our presentation explaining that uh, collapsing bubbles had in the center of those collapsing bubbles have similar pressures and temperatures to that of the sun, and that's why you can achieve effectively atomic reconstruction through cold fusion or leader. But in our case, low energy atomic reaction. So we only use the protein, so there's no nucleus. There's hydrogen, there's no nucleus, so there are no nuclear byproducts if you don't have a nucleus. We've got here, so the water vapor. Water is gas form, is gas phase, uh, plasmoids, iron chrome, platinum shock wave, heat exhaust, pulse, vacuum plasma, spark. So these are the catalysts and the, the materials used and I'll just on that in the previous section I want just to focus back on one, one thing that to make sure that people don't miss is that one of the obvious in both sound and in physical sh propagation of a shockwave is uh, as everyone knows when the internal combustion engine is working there's a loud sound and that is waste energy so there's waste heat there's waste sound and obviously there's a shockwave which is enormous waste of energy just a shockwave itself now the unique thing about our uh, energy recovery system is that we actually use that sound wave that shockwave to, to, if you like, like energize, energize the catalytic effect of both the materials, like the stainless steel as a catalyst in our machine, but, but also the plasmoids themselves, because the shockwave wave certainly is an energy source for them, invigoration, because it, it helps, that shockwave helps to precipitate um, atomic reconstruction. So we go from the liquid that we start with, we liquid to gas, the disassembled water separates into two parts, ionized hydrogen gas and one part oxygen. But remember, it's actually, uh, we're taking the liquid uh, water taken into its gas phase, then uh, that's together with the already gener generated plasmoids, which we charge up in the thunderstorm generator, which is basically using lightning. And the fact that these gases are highly flammable and burning of the HSO gas reverts to water. So obviously in the combustion chamber, which is really interesting, I have a term called bounce burn. And that is that, that because of the nature of the plasmoids and their interaction with the water, you can actually have the separation of water into hydrogen and oxygen, but then the recombination of that several, several times, times, what I call a bounce burn, because, because you, you have, have in the, the time frame we're talking about, about in the introduction, introduction primarily primary plasma, which is instantaneous, but you have a burn front on the uh, hydrocarbons in the uh, normal internal combustion mode. And it's also a burn front over time, uh, which means that you have a, uh, an interaction between the plasma created in the burn front and the plasma created from the discharge from the plasmoids. Okay, so with the, uh, the burn of the HHO, the gas reverts to H2O, uh, gas to liquid, uh, when the HHO is supposed to positively charge plasma, it ignites and returns to liquid. But what's happening here is that the generated plasmoids have charged in a high negative charge, and they come into the combustion chamber, and when the spark plug in a normal motor, or we have the Stanley Meyer a Memorial spark plug, which is actually a plasmoid generator, that, that uh, gives a plasma discharge, which instantaneously discharges the, uh, the plasmoids. And if you talk about it on a 24-hour clock, it's like uh, the plasmoids are actually 
discharging within, say, the first second, and then 24 hours later, the, the, uh, the fuel starts to burn. That's a sort of the, uh, the time frames you're talking about. The plasma is instantaneous and the burn front is slow in, in comparison. So anyway, so the, uh, and then therefore the bounce burn means that what's happening in that process, because effectively you've got this huge time gap, is that there's a concept that the, the water is, the, the hydrogen oxygen are combining, but then with the catalytic let me listen to that again. Pardon me. That uh, gives <laughs> plasma discharge, which instantaneously oh, like, discharges the. Uh, it is plasma. going fast. Talk about a 24 hour clock. Like, he, uh, I just gotta make sure that I'm actually like everything he says. I'm at least like capturing. Like so far, I think I, I just didn't, wasn't paying enough attention. Let's go here. I mean, I'm I'm honestly. I'm having positive vibes about it so far in this video and my thoughts I'm not saying it works but it's just generally speaking like also I saw there's there's definitely videos of things that I need to look into of the actual engine functioning now that I especially now that I watch these is that the generated plasmoids have charged once I've watched these in high negative charge and they come into the combustion chamber and when the spark plug in a normal motor or we have the Stanley Meyer a memorial spark plug which is actually a plasma generator that that uh, gives a plasma discharge which instantaneously discharges the uh, the plasmoids and if you talk about a 24 hour clock it's like uh, the plasmoids are actually <coughs> also I'm gonna just be part of me I'm gonna be making these unlisted they're probably and putting them in um the playlist which will be public so that they're like they're public they're available on my channel it, the first one's gonna be public i just don't want like a chain of malcolm bendel reaction videos i just don't like in my when someone's scrolling through my content i would prefer they see part one and then click it and then at the top of the description have all caps playlist and like explain that these are unlisted <laughs> they're uh, here though if you, if anyone's interested in this kind of thing that way it's more hidden i have the same thing with my sandy hook uh, alex alex jones defamation trial reaction videos which are like a hundred videos that are all unlisted except the first one <laughs> because I'm not allowed that one it's because I'm not allowed and also because it's just I lost a lot of at least 10 followers or subscribers because of that there are just like people just don't understand that it actually was staged by the US government <laughs> they don't understand that it actually was So it's, it's way more difficult for me to talk about it. So especially that one, I just kind of, and I'm like, I'm going to get reported for even talking about this <clears throat> if people just casually watch it. But if I bury it in unlisted videos in a playlist that only, only when I blow up, if ever, then will people notice it exists and then, then they'll watch it and they'll, the people who are more interested will watch it that way i won't just get fucking reported like oh we don't like that you said words <sighs> i said words did you see the words he said them discharging within say the first second and then 24 hours later the, uh, the fuel starts to burn that's a sort of the uh, time frame you're talking about the place is instantaneous and the burn front is slow in, in comparison so, anyway, so the, uh, and then the <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't agree with the words, okay? <laughs> Can't just say any words. Doesn't matter if you think the words to be true. I don't agree, so you can't say. Well, why does your opinion that the words that you're saying are true matter when I don't agree don't speak the words I don't agree with you speak what I agree with like Sandy Hook was a fucking stage false flag like that one 
<laughs> people people don't press that. They don't press it. They're like, we'll let you guys have that one in the conspiracy world. They they aren't willing to touch it nearly as much as other conspiracies. They're like, yeah, you guys have that. We'll just leave it alone. But the shit didn't happen as told. I mean, sure, something happened, obviously. Like, time passes. The place exists. So, like, things happened. People were there. Like, it wasn't like nothing happened. It's just not what we're told. <laughs> whatsoever is what happened there so <clears throat> it would be cool if that was the case for even wars i wish that would be so much better than to be like yeah wars the war is fucking war man so much better if people like <clears throat> agreed to do the duty of being a slave to the government and just okay you want me to go kill some people i never met okay <laughs> like once i get there to go do it they're like okay this is what's happening you guys just say you guys hang out you know you guys do whatever they know they know what's up don't worry they're, yeah those those isis over there they don't they know what's up look this is what's going on we're staging some shit for the world it's better that way okay just think about it. It's better that way. Do you want to die? No, me neither. Let's not do that. Let's stage some shit. Because we gotta wake the fuck up. And people just literally... I mean, that would be so nice, but that's probably not the case. I mean, I can't say absolutely unequivocally that's not, like, always been happening. That would be so crazy. <laughs> like, like videos. I, I saw someone... I saw a video the other day couple guys in a gun shop i'm like why is this on youtube or not on youtube on twitter like what what's gonna happen based on dudes one guy walks by another guy they're just standing next to him he fucking boom the guy just falls it's like dude he didn't even see you you just fucking shot him this way that's fucked up dude Imagine to live your whole life and then to die by a bullet that just, like, fucking you didn't even see it. You didn't have a fucking... Damn, dude. It, and then he, like, moved around and, dude, fucking double taps him. Oh, my God, damn. This is probably real. But it would be nice if that was fuck. It was that level of stage shit where, like, it was stage two. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would. I saw. I mean, I've seen so many videos that are like. I mean, it would take some acting. Like, you watch a movie. People aren't that good at acting. I'm like, sure, they're good, but I know they're acting. You know. But in real life, if some people were so good at acting that they could truly, like, understand how to convey earnest reactions like every nuance of their like being di on display as if they truly had that happen like that would be just incredible like academy award-winning acting levels that are un real and then on top of that they'd have to stage sandy hook knowing that they would be like staging it so it would be exposable <laughs> okay we're gonna do this yeah yeah okay just put this okay change her change the shoes yeah i don't know if that happened in this one that happened in the recent the, the transvestite shooter story of christians Oddly, the shooter had two pairs of shoes on. I found that odd. I haven't looked into it. I haven't really looked into shootings enough to be like, Sandy Hook didn't happen kind of level of confidence on the matter. I don't think there's a, either, like, this focus in, uh, like, conspiracy, alternative, just people's opinions, videos. People's opinions, videos. Videos of people voicing their opinions on the matter that are not equivalent to just the consensus narrative we're expected to just agree to. <laughs> Am 
I gonna even uh, get anywhere in this video? Not even talking about the fit content at all. Like, it, how close are the things I'm talking about in this content? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a catalyst. I mean, there's some catalyst here. Go with that. Shockwave, maybe. Some heat. That shit is fire. <laughs> Exhaust. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh. What's happening in that process, which is effectively got this huge time gap, is that there's a concept that the, the water is. The, the hydrogen oxygen are confining, but then with the catalytic effect of the metal and the plasmoids, you have this balance. But... <laughs> that look, just know that look was. I was muted, wasn't I, mother? <laughs> just. <laughs> I can't do it now. <laughs> Which is very interesting. So yeah, that was, uh, that was nice. I'm glad I had some random sidetrack. <laughs> but I was muted, fuck. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it merits a lot more, more, more study, study, but I was certain that that, that concept, concept is... Because of the <laughs> that was nice. What in the fuck? What, dudes? It's nice to share my random idle thoughts that, I mean, sure, it's kind of like this. Maybe it's not true. I'm like, ah... Uh, Odds are it's not true, but it's useful to like contemplate the possibility by considering it. <laughs> so sometimes I find myself literally considering it. I mean, maybe it is what's happening, and then I'm not considering it enough. Like, oh my god. Some Freemason skull and bones, I don't know. I don't know why Skull and Bones was a second in that list, but whatever, the Rothschilds, all the, I mean, it's complex interactions that are very interesting about what the implications of those might be, but anyway, that's uh, for later study. So next, here we have the ionized chamber providing the energy for the ionization of mainly the argon gas into the plasmoid generator, which is actually the MSAT plasmoid generator, collapsing bubbles, micro bubbles creating your plasmoids, and with the vacuum, the air, water is gas phase, and obviously the atmospheric air, and the plasmoids travel through the thunderstorm generator. As you said, the cold. <coughs> so he's saying the water is separated. And into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen. This is what see there, so that you have the concept of the, the wrong pills tube, which is we'll get onto later in this presentation. But basically, that that comes into the motor as an effective fuel, recovering the waste energy, half the waste energy, like half the energy, say 34% efficiency from the motor. Hydrogen. So therefore, 66% waste energy, and that's in the form, as I said, of shockwave and heat. And uh, also sound, which is also energy. So anyway, so on to the next one. <coughs> How is he doing this? This is very energy extensive. I should have been paying. Uh, so it is by the... Is this the UV part of it? The UV part ionizes. In this case, he's not saying ionization he's just jumping to the final product of it I guess it ionizes and then goes through that thunderstorm thing through the components to make it a plasmoid but in so doing also makes hydrogen which then somehow he separates out the oxygen Oxygen, hydrogen, so like separated. <clears throat> What's up, phone? Oh, 
freaking random text. Hello, it's Emily. Oh. I've never met an Emily, really. Sure, I know of Emily's, but I don't know if I've ever met an Emily. Pardon me, Emily's, I know. I really don't know. <laughs> uh, Pre-ionization chamber. Okay. The ionization of mainly the argon gas into the plasmoid generator, which is actually the MSAT plasma. The second I went too far. Right, let's go to the start of the... Which is of its directions. I guess I didn't... Might be, but anyway, that's uh, for later study. So next... Okay, let's go here. Let's slow this down. I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to rush, so I'm like, I know I'm not trying to rush when I'm talking. Oh, trying to rush? Well, in terms of the playing, not in the talking side. <laughs> Providing. It's a little too fast. I'm also. Hi, thanks, Jack. Collapsing <laughs> bubbles. <laughs> 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 Microbubbles creating your plasmoids, and with the vacuum, the air, water in this gas phase, and obviously the atmospheric air, and the plasmoids travel through the thunderstorm generator. As I said, opposing vortices there. I do need to stop that though. Again, honestly, if I'm being honest, at least like balance, dude. <laughs> I'm like, it's out of control. Uh, so that you have the concept of the, the wrong pills tube, which is, we'll get onto later in this presentation, but basically that that comes into the motor as an effective fuel recovering the waste energy, half the waste energy, like half the energy, say 34% efficiency from the motor. So therefore 66% waste energy, and that's in the form, as I said, with shockwave and heat, and um, also sound, which is also energy. So anyway, so... On to the next one. Again, just reinforcing that this is uh, how it works is you've got these opposing, you've got the exhaust gas which is hot going in an anti-clockwise direction producing positive charge and then you have opposed to that going into a vacuum which is imploding a stream of uh, water in its gas phase and uh, uh, MSAT plasmoids. And this Coming into here, we've had temperatures of minus 85 degrees, coming out minus 40 degrees, and this, while this sphere here is up to temperatures in excess of 800 degrees Celsius. The same principle, you have a cold front, a wind and water, and then you have the uh, warm front. I would like to see. See? <laughs> this is fucking... 800 Celsius, huh? Fucking show me. That's a high temperature, dude. You, are you saying it's getting there? Fucking, where's the temperature gun? That would be, because I mean, if he just had the, like, the device that we've been looking at all along and somehow managed to get this to 800 degrees Celsius... I mean, I guess we'll see. I don't want to... I keep talking too soon. I really should just have utterly been controlled and just watched and then reacted at the end. I just hate that I hate... I just would prefer to actually be able to remember and react to. Like, the, the more I do that, the less I actually react to. Like, it's more... It would, at that point, it'd just be... A summary like I, I would do a summary video practically and they collide the uh, place points come from the ground oh a nice path which therefore can equalize that charge before it becomes dangerous to living things including trees and animals and the next so here's a fundamental very important little known and hitherto really misunderstood or no matrix with which to explain that if you take a compressed air at say room temperature 23 degrees celsius and you put this into with no moving parts it just that you have a swell guide and this swells out so this is swelling out and you have a um, annular cone venturi there and you wind that in to close that gap 
until the pressure, pressure pushes, pushes through, through another pipe back in the opposite direction. direction. And, and you can, can have, have, you know, if you have 23 degrees C, there, 15 degrees C here, then 44 degrees C here. So it's splitting the hot and cold elements of the airstream. Now, this has been recorded up to minus 50 degrees C, and this has been recorded to plus 200 degrees C in certain circumstances. So just, so just to read that out, the vortex tube, also known as the rung Hilsch vortex tube, or the Hilsch tube, in recent times is a mechanical device that separates a compressed gas into hot and cold streams. The gas emerging from the hot end can reach temperature 200 degrees, 392 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very hot. Uh, gas emerging from the cold end can reach minus 50, that's uh, minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also very cold. This is not his, so it's probably wrong. I think it's Hirsch vortex tube, something like that. Vortex tube. Paul to rock. No moving parts. Pressurized gas is injected tangentially into a swirl chamber here, 90 degrees tangentially, into a swirl chamber and accelerated to a high rate of rotation, which is here, rotates. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you're rotating here anti-clockwise, then there'll be a clockwise motion in the opposite direction. And if this is expanding out, then it'll be contracting in. You know, and I'd just like people to think about that very carefully. For every action, there's an equal and opposite action. So if you have expanding vortex, and remember going back to the prime principle is that there, every, every force in the universe is not traveling in a straight line. Every force travels in a curve. That curve either has to be an inward spiral implosion or an outward spiral. That's really not true. Every, everything wants to travel in a straight line. That's the reality. So everything, is traveling in a straight line it's just not in a straight world <laughs> explosion so those are equal and opposite forces if you have a vortex force that is anti-clockwise and exploding and it's hot then you produce another vortex inside that that is actually imploding let me go back a little bit you have expanding vortex and remember going back to the prime principle is that there every every force in the universe is not traveling in a straight line every force travels in a curve that curve either has to be an inward spiral implosion or an outward spiral explosion so those are equal and opposite forces if you have a vortex force that is anti-clockwise and exploding and it's hot then you produce another vortex inside that. That's deep, though. That it's he said that he's saying everything's not traveling in a straight line, but traveling on a curved surface, pretty much. <clears throat> Which is pretty, I would say, like a a, pers a way of seeing things that probably is just generally true that that is generally how it is like sure everything like is traveling in a straight line though it's just on a curved surface due to infinity i guess essentially and nothing in the balance between It's almost like a current. Maybe it's not even similar to this. Like a, a current flowing into a dense object that then, like, between the two is the, gal is the universe. Like, essentially a current of subtlety, of subtle, but just infinite abundance of um, nothingness, pretty much but in a way where then it, it behaves as a fluid and flows as a current that then essentially hits like a resistance that is like the reality that we like, maybe the oneness, the infinity, 
something opposite, so probably infinity, even though infinity is kind of actually equal in some ways, if it's more like different tiers and octaves where one is the other, like it goes like, <clears throat> so in a way opposite to nothing and infinity is maybe one. It's kind of like this, between zero and infinity, the, I believe the center point is one. So I feel like maybe that's like the dense structure that the reality is composed of is the one. Just one. That which is one. Which is everything, all of us. <clears throat> everything that the universe or the one is composed of. And then the one has flows of nothingness in large abundance flow within it that then shapes it like a shallogram and just creates a universe. Something of that nature, I feel like. Anyway just made me think of that by, by like a current hitting resistance and then having vortices spiraling down tubes that is actually imploding clockwise and cold so for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction not something <laughs> that was that same look Ugh, did i re did i record that too <laughs> but something that people should think about because this, this is, is, you know, pressurized gases are due to tangentially the small chamber cell at during the rotation. Due to the conical cone here, here. At, at the end, end of the tube, only the outer, outer shell of compressed gas is allowed to escape at, at that end. end. The remainder is forced to return in an inner vortex of reduced diameter within the outer, within, see it's in the center, within the outer vortex. So this is, imagine this has no boundaries between us. This does, just does this automatically. And, and so, so the uh, automatic, automatic separation, separation in our machine, machine you have a stainless, stainless steel. steel. It's a stainless steel, steel boundary, but, but it still works the same way. way. If you look at this as being a sphere, then the hot exhaust, exhaust gases, gases come, come out and are expanding, and, and the, the, the gas, gas water in its gas phase, phase and the plasmoids are imploding. imploding. Now, yeah. very interesting. I don't think it works the same way at all because I don't think he has. I guess I guess he's talking about a different device than I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the tube that had the colliding and zero point where then they went one went around the other, one was hot, one was cold, but coming from opposite ends. Not the same where as this, but I don't think he's talking about that. I think now um he's talking about the other one, so the how to make plasmoids. Separation in our machine, you have a stainless steel this is stainless steel boundary, but it still works the same way. If you look at this as being a sphere, then the hot exhaust gases come out and are expanding, and the oh, it is a sphere. The gas water in its gas phase and the plasmoids are imploding. Now, very interesting physics is that if you have H2O water and the hydrogen is actually heating up going into the vacuum, whereas the oxygen is cooling down, you have a mechanical mechanism to break H2O apart, water apart in addition to the catalytic effect of the stainless steel, in addition to the catalytic effect on the atomic level of the MSAT plasmoids. This is probably the simplest, but actually most complex for people to see what's actually happening in our thunderstorm generator, because this principle is a fundamental principle of physics. Next. So here again is the same uh, diagram. You can examine at your leisure with some uh, keys in there, you know, which is the hot end, which is the cold end. But the, the thing with the Hilsch tube is that what you're doing is you're, you're separating, say, for example, temperature as an average. There's obviously particles in the air that are very active, which have... It just makes me think of, how, like, mechanisms that the Earth, like, geologically had, like, magma flows. That where the Earth has like complex structures of all sorts of natures that probably behave in ways where they just naturally do things of this 
where it has like a current flow one way and then like a cold flow that it goes back down the through the current opposite to it that then like differentiates materials all sorts of potentials in terms of even on atomic scales just things that are shaping reality without even being um, some invention I guess like it was just there so not just there like it, <laughs> and all of Earth's history happened and in, including it was attacked by vortex weapons if you have air, you have plasmoids. <laughs> matter, you have plasmoids. If you have a living organism, you have a heart which creates plasmoids, generates plasmoids through the vacuum and pressure. And ironically, the Vajra, which we're talking about, is actually the same design as the heart because your heart muscles have alternating bands of clockwise imploding muscles and anti-clockwise exploding muscles to recreate the... Uh, that's why it's such an efficient pump because it's actually designed on the Vajra principles of equal and opposite force. And equal amounts of function. So for every vacuum pump, there's a pressure pump. On the Vajra so principles. That's also a deep thought. Like if the human, the human being was made by literally, like what he just said, like on the principles of the Vajra, the heart was like especially focused into this way. That would be fascinating. <laughs> like, like, like Adam and Eve like they didn't know it's not really written but that's just like an aspect that's just like the the future knows and the people in the like Nephilim society knew of that types of type of knowledge maybe just a thought I don't know if he like truly was suggesting the heart to have been designed like with the Vajra in mind like that's a that's a deep thought if he was <laughs> shit I mean and anti-clockwise exploding muscles to recreate the uh, that's why it's such an efficient pump because it's actually designed on the Vajra principles of equal and opposite force and equal and opposite function so for every vacuum pump there's a pressure pump so basically as I said fundamental principles of nature easily understood once you realize and discover the existence of MSAT plasmoids which in the blood would be called sites of Magellan so uh, when they've been identified uh, in the blood so we'll go to the next one this is the fourth state of matter we're getting into now the the fact that that the internal combustion engine really has worked off a burn front and that burn front is simply a chemical reaction but in parts of that when it gets hot it can create plasma but but you know, obviously the spark plug is actually a plasma generating device it creates a mini lightning but if you have a uh, a stanley meyer spark plug that's actually a, a metal uh, rod which comes to a point a needle that you can roll off if you like when you blow smoke rings, smoke rings it rolls off a plasmoid which is positively charged, which then discharges all the plasmoids within the combustion chamber. So I'll just read this out. This is the fourth state of matter. So you've got solid, liquid, gas, and then plasma. And then if you organize that plasma, you create plasmoids. And the only way you can organize plasma is through creating a black hole. The only way you can create a black hole is through mirror planes. That is, torus is a mirror of itself. So it's a infinity symbol, but if you look at the equatorial plane, you know, it's a mirror image of itself. And you'll see that every reference to the Vajra in the sacred geometry and, and our pictures is always a mirror image in three planes. So X, Y, Z, you have mirror images on every plane, which is hidden in plain sight. And the intersection points of those planes, by definition, has to be a zero point. If you move a plasma through a magnetic field, it's possible to generate an electric current directly from the plasma. You can bypass the whole mechanical system of turbines and armatures that conventional generators need. The MHD generator is called a direct conversion device. It converts heat energy directly to electricity without having a mechanical stage in between. 
In principle, the MHD generator is quite simple. There are no mechanical moving parts, only the plasma moves. The MHD generator is basically a pipe surrounded by a magnetic field coil at one end of the pipe is the heat source, at the other an exhaust stack. Electrodes in the pipe tap off the current that is generated. Next. Yeah, the plasma is produced in the heat source by simple thermal ionisation, that is heat raises the temperature of the molecules to the point where electrons break free. The resulting plasma is only slightly ionised even in the hottest burners available today. There are other ways to ionise the gas, such as using electrical fields of ultraviolet light to excite the electrons, which goes back to the whole pre-ionisation of the air which is introduced to the motors. I mean, practical MHD generators <laughs> through thermal ionisation is the simplest and cheapest technique. Magnetic field is arranged to run perpendicularly to the direction of the plasma flow. As Faraday showed, an electric current is generated in a direction that's perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the plasma flow. Next. MHD generator produces DC power only. I'm just going to read it again. Plasma is produced in the heat source by a simple thermal ionization. That is, the heat raises the temperature of the molecules to the point where the electrons break free. The resulting plasma is only slightly ionized. Even in the hottest burners available today, there are other ways to ionize a gas, such as using electrical fields or ultraviolet light to excite the electrons. In practical MHD generators, though, thermal ionization is the simplest and cheapest technique. The magnetic field is arranged to run perpendicularly to the direction of the plasma flow. Da, 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 da. Page L. Oh, I don't know. What magnetic field? Again, with the no antecedent basis. Right? I don't see it. I don't see magnetic field. Electrical field. It doesn't make sense. What a magnetic field. <laughs> uh, it's arranged to run perpendicular. It's fine, it's quote, but it just doesn't really. It's hard to say what exactly it's talking about. Is it arranged to run perpendicularly to the... He might have even explained it in a way that I might benefit from going back and checking that out. Run perpendicular to the direction of the plasma flow. Thermal ionization, that is, the heat raises the temperature of the molecules to the point where electrons break free. I'm not seeing any... I'm just not sure. Anyway... As Faraday showed, an electric current is generated in a direction that's perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the plasma flow. So is it arranged or it just does? <laughs> okay, whatever. The direction of the plasma flow. As Faraday showed, an electric current is generated in a direction that's perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the plasma flow. Next. Didn't explain it. MHD generator produces DC power only. Various schemes have been tried for making AC generators, but to date the simplest and cheapest way to produce AC is to compute. I don't know where you even got on talking about this book. Mentor books? I didn't realize it was a book, I guess. Okay. So maybe the magnetic field is mentioned back here. No. Electrons break to the 
direction of the MHD generator's output in a conventional inverter. I'm not even sure if it explained what MHD. MHD, MHD. MHD. <clears throat> have alternating and perpendicularly to the direction of the plasma flow. As Faraday shows, the cheapest way to produce AC is to convert the MHD generator's output in a conventional inverter. All generators are essentially heat engines, and the amount of energy you can extract from them is directly related to the temperature difference between the hottest and coldest ends of the system, which goes back to... <clears throat> like he's not trying to make sure that people understand what he's saying. He probably didn't put this together. Quote, get some quotes from some re reference. But like, I don't think they explained MHD. Maybe he did, but like, it doesn't actually provide the acronym. Like magnetic maybe, but uh, I don't wanna think about it. <laughs> Like, and then the, the lack of antecedent basis again, that just, like, didn't really make sense. I don't know what to think. Like, this is not a useful presentation of someone else's book that the quotes are kind of random. The fact that we have an internal pipe up to eight minus eighty or down to minus eighty five degrees C, but then the outside sphere, which is in direct contact with it, is actually about eight hundred degrees C. So that gives you the temperature difference. In engineering practices, this means it's desirable to to convert the MHD generator's output in a conventional inverter. All generators are essentially heat engines, and the amount of energy you can extract from them is directly related to the temperature difference between the hottest and coldest ends of the system, which goes back to the fact that we have our internal pipe up to 80 minus 80, or down to 80 minus 85 degrees C, but then the outside sphere, which is in direct contact with it, is actually about 800 degrees C, so that gives you the temperature difference. In engineering practices, this means it's desirable to operate with a high, with as high a peak of temperature as possible. The next. So here we go. Pre-ionization chamber because ionized plasma and then the plasmoid the MSAT plasmoid generator that's actually collapsing micro bubbles creating the uh, MSAT plasmoids which then go with water in its gas phase into here countering and then as you, you've got equal and opposite forces as described and that uh, as I said this normally can come in at minus 85 degrees C and go out at minus 40 even though it's in direct contact with 800 degree temperature here now in this is with our test work but we've designed it to operate at lower temperatures which it does uh, so we have a sphere uh, here that's only about now uh, 400 degrees c with about 260 degrees c actually 432 degrees which you might recognize from other notes and there's three stages 234 degrees and then 432 degrees as i said that goes into the engine recovering the waste energy from the engine it's exhaust and re-injecting re it so we'll <clears throat> again with the white celsius <laughs> That ain't, that ain't, that ain't equal to Calvin, dude. <laughs> They're not the same in terms of technicalities. They're just, uh, you gotta use Calvin. Just got to, if you're gonna do it, it'd be like design. Oh, 432. And the scale that like is most appropriate for the temperatures we're getting. <laughs> Not the scale that's actually like the universal scale, because that's the scale that we should be using. You know, that doesn't get to zero, right? It doesn't go negative. Like, it, absolute zero is zero Kelvin, which cannot be reached because t 
technical reasons, it, it's literally removing all of the subtle particles that are within a containing a space. This is not possible because there's always more subtle particles there. So sure, you can get the temperature real low, but that ohm is still present. So again, this is not a free energy device. It's simply recovering wasted energy. You want to look at so you just, got, so you just got to use Kelvin. I'm, I'm just saying, if it's based on Celsius, it's irrelevant in terms of any numerology. It does. It's just a scale we use. Sure, it's based on water. I guess based on water. Maybe he's got a valid point. And if he's really building the technology based on water to base it off of Kelvin or Celsius. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. But I would say it's probably it's probably more reasonable to be based on Kelvin. Although again, in some water based technology, I guess it's possible that Celsius is more reasonable. <clears throat> Alright, I gotta go. I'll be back. See you guys later. Peace out.